And we are live, folks. Awesome. It's Monday. It's Monday. It's uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I am sounding like I'm on NPR right now. But it doesn't matter because it's time for another exciting episode of... Figure Reaction. Uh... So tonight, guys, we got something really cool. Um, Mike, as we talked about. Yeah, uh, we do have a really great show tonight. I mean, this is kind of a follow-on from what our, our previous show was when we had our guest Quentin J. Bedwell on. Uh, again, an illustrator and comic book writer who actually fulfilled a, you know, a dream from his childhood and actually is now drawing for a toy line. And while it's amazing, there are times you might not see that image until you actually get the box in hand. So what really sells a collector or a fan of a, of a line off on stuff? And that is going to be the images that a company uses or the influencers in the world or just those really amazingly creative people that bring an action figure to life. And we have a very special guest tonight on who does everything I just described. He is a, an amazing artist behind the camera and behind the screen, and he's an amazing YouTuber. I, I can just continue to talk more about it. But, ladies and gentlemen, we have Jared Serdork with us this evening. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you for the um, incredibly kind introduction. That's very nice. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Um, you guys are great. Uh, yeah, we're great we've to have been, you on here as well. I mean, we've definitely seen your photos everywhere. They have gone viral. They've been used in clips. They've been passed through the internet. I mean, I myself, I love action figure photography. Uh, the intro that yeah. you just that we do, all those photos on that intro, those are shots that actually I shot myself. It's oh, point. very nice. Actually, so, I was wondering that. I was like, oh, who did these? Yeah, so that's Beauty actually all done with this, <laughs> all this kind of stuff. Yes. Back here. So. Awesome, putting the um the amazing collection to very good use. That's the whole per exactly. I like to say if we, they they deserve to be more than just on a shelf. Yeah, yeah. There's some good stuff back there. I'm look checking out that Storm Collectibles uh little shelf there. Actually, yeah, they're on my, uh, how many? Uh, oh, there's like Storm. Sorry, there's like three Storm Collectible shelves right there. Are those or four? Uh, hundred percent filled up. With those are some nice yeah, shelves. It's, it's, I mean, it's reason to bleed over, but um, Storm is currently on my list right now. Mm. Mm. The what? The 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 kill list? Yes. The, uh, actually, <laughs> they got too many of lists. No, actually, they. <laughs> I'm sure if you follow them, uh, apparently they don't no longer have the Mortal Kombat license. Yeah, you know what? I did see. I did see that. Um, I I, I didn't see on their website, but I saw somebody posted like. Yeah. The Mortal Kombat thing is no longer listed on their website, which is pretty disappointing because that's like probably their biggest thing, yeah. right? And they didn't, they never finished a single video game roster. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? I mean, the only Kano we have is from, MK1, is from MK3. They didn't give us an MK1 Kano. We never got a Sonya. We got, never got any of the female ninjas. And I, yeah, um, wow, yeah. yeah, and I never won. Interesting, I wonder. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's a, I don't know. I'm sure, I'm sure they're, it, I'm sure whatever reason they, if, if it's not there as of now, I'm sure it was not their own doing or because they wanted to. I'm sure they, they would love to keep putting them out. <laughs> I'm, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll bet you we'll see it again. I'll bet you we'll see yeah. it again. Yeah, I would show yeah. mine, but it's kind of an embarrassment. <laughs> it's in, a, it's in a work in progress. So I'm sure it's amazing. <clears throat> All right. Well, I guess one thing we'll start checking out some people in the chat. We have one of our co-hosts from from the Figure Action Podcast, T Man Nine Seven Eight. I you, was here. Great. Uh, who else do we have in the chat, Dave? We got Mariano, Mariano. Um, Toy Mafia for uh, effort. Let's see, random and 
got as I said I'm seeing some I'm seeing more names I'm seeing more numbers on the viewer list than people who've been who posted in the uh, <laughs> in the ch in the chat area. Um, wow, awesome. wow, we got a, we, we got another lady in the house, uh, Jared. I think you you are attracting them right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad everybody's loving the 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 world of of toys and action figures. You know, absolutely. So I guess what we'll do is let's go starting. Let's start talking about you and our evening here. So cool. this is uh this is some of your most recent work and it's mind blowing, dude. I mean thank you. <laughs> Appreciate uh, it. As I was telling Dave before, your your most recent video with uh with Spider-Man and how you set up that shot, um, it was absolutely fantastic. And we will definitely thanks. We're gonna put your uh your YouTube channel and everything else here for the replay crew, but if anyone in this chat or watching this video has not seen your channel they're doing themselves a disservice honestly because your Thank work you. is great um and maybe this is like asking your favorite child but uh of the <laughs> four here which one did you have the most fun doing oh I, I mean they're all very fun uh in the the mandalorian one where he's you know skewering a couple of troopers i i actually like uh, set my bag on fire by uh, by accident. You know, I was using a sparkler <laughs> and I kind of set it down when I was done with it. Always in a rush. Mm -hmm. I'm always rushing. And I kind of dropped it in my bag by accident. And so I didn't notice um, it was burning until I started to smell it. Turn around. Oh, no, my bag's on fire. And so I had to uh, act quite quickly because there was more fireworks in that bag and expensive equipment. Oh. Yes, the only thing oh, that was goodness. damaged was actually this little tube green light back here, but it was just melted a little bit. So luckily everything's good. Besides the bag, the bag is is no longer in use. Yeah. But it was fun, and the, and the photo came out good. So that's that's it, all that matters. <laughs> awesome. Uh, that, but they were yeah, all quite fun. Sure. Which which uh, Mando is that? Is that the Mafex? That's the the new Mafex. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's good. It's great. It's really great. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, I'd like to give you the stage and kind of talk about yourself. I mean, how did how did this how did Sir Dork come to be? How how did all this happen? Oh, I mean, it's my I guess story of how I got into toy photography is pretty much the same as I think anybody who has gotten not anybody, but so many people. Just you know, I'm collecting action figures. I'm using social media, and I say, up oh, posting a picture of. Hey, check out this new figure I got, you know, just as mm -hmm. like the most basic picture possible. And then by doing that, I kind of uh, subsequently discover toy photography just naturally by using it. And I'm like, wow, this is cool. I'm inspired. I want to do this. So I gave it a shot. Um, and then okay. I slowly kind of became more interested in the photos than, you know, the figures themselves. I'm, and, it's a crazy thing. Yeah, you know, I'm sure that's just like everyone's like, yep, same, same here. And it's, it's, you know, it's been a wonderful journey, you know. So, so how long have you been taking photography or how long have you been doing this art form? My first toy photo I posted was in 2014. It started around, around then. It was with, <laughs> almost exclusively with Power Rangers back then. Power Rangers and a lot of, um, a lot of DC stuff, so still do plenty of DC stuff, but mostly Power Rangers back then. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. and then I guess you said you start from something basic. What made you decide to take it then, you know, to using the air compressors, using the sparklers, using <laughs> when, what, how did that, when, when did you be like, okay, you know what, I'm going to literally not just kick it up a notch, I'm just going to freaking make my own <laughs> staircase per se? Well, I, I I'm, was very inspired by a lot of guys doing super action packed photos. So the two people that really inspired me the most at the time was Sergeant Bananas. And at the time, you know, he's you know legendary at this point for, for us, but um, he was doing a lot of super, just hard star Wars war photos with just like dark war. And it was so cool. And I was super inspired. And then I was also inspired by this guy named Everything Kylo, who did also a lot of uh, explosive practical stuff. He doesn't really post anymore, unfortunately. And so uh, just by doing that, I, I want to do that. And so the only way I really knew how was to try and do it practically. I didn't really know how to do anything 
digitally, you know, just practice, you know, kicking up dirt is easier than using Photoshop. And so just from there, tried things, learned things and just kept doing it over and over. And you just learn so much the more you do things. And especially if you're really excited about it and you're really passionate about it, it's so much easier to learn and, and get better at stuff. And that's about it, really. Well, you just mentioned Sergeant Bananas. I mean, so what other photographers do you currently follow right now? Would you say? Um, honestly, that that's that is like the hardest question because there's just, <laughs> I, I, like, I almost feel bad even mentioning one because that would be such a, I don't like, I don't like. I feel if I even mention somebody, I'm I'm, I'm missing out on ten hundred more other great ones too. That. Um, but I, I will say that I am constantly, uh, constantly inspired every day by just tons of people that I find, even people that I find myself, I, I followed. And then I don't even remember that when I followed them and I'm scrolling, and I'm like, wow, who is this? This is amazing. It's just like the community is constantly growing. Uh, it's just, it's awesome. It's, it's, we're, we're so lucky to be in such an awesome community of people. And that's what kind of where I, I was going to ask is like, you know, you said, you know, you, you've been doing this now for, for many years and just my own re reigniting uh, feature in regards to grabbing, grabbing collections again, uh, cause I didn't start back till, till COVID, but again, looking at your photos and other ones, I, I can just, I can only imagine, like you said, you've seen this boom and this expansion that happens organically or if there have been highs and lows that you you've noticed uh, you know with increasing uh increasing number of other people that are taking these f photos or taking these you know taking figures and putting them in these amazing like you know poses and just you know, mixing and matching all sorts of different figure lines i mean it's it's really it's inspiring. I mean, that's yeah, again, so much following you from the start. I was inspired by so many ways and I'm very much a novice toy photographer. Um, but I mean, I'm taking, I, I keep looking at your cues about things and like these little nuances in your photos are always really <laughs> great to look at. Thanks. Yeah. And there's, there's, um, there's always somebody bringing something new to the table constantly. And then we just, one person learns from them and then every and just like, it's so cool. It's so cool to see it happen. Well, so, a lot of things. Oh, go ahead, Dave, please. Oh, no, I was going to, I was going to say, I mean, the reason, of course, we brought you here, you know, um, and my final point on there, you know, the Star Wars tribute video, how did you feel knowing that you got to be part of something like that? It was, it was really cool. Um, so I, you're, you're, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm thinking of the right thing. It's the one that, um, like the official Star Wars, triple force friday yes. thing okay mm -hmm. okay i just want to make sure um well yeah i guess so in, in 2019 i was like invited to london uh for the triple force friday event that they were doing that was celebrating the toys for the mandalorian rise of skywalker and jedi fallen order it was like their triple force friday too bad they don't do force fridays anymore um and it was quite amazing um it was i was invited along with another toy photographer named uh, Dan Sparks under the mm -hmm. name of Rebel Jawa, who's an amazing guy. We got to know each other quite well. Um, and we were kind of shown off as like, like these, like fans. They're, they're trying to just like show fans from all different types of people who are super great into acrobatics and into this and this. And so they brought in toy photographers too. And um, it was one of the coolest experiences ever. And plus, I got the first Black Series Mandalorian figure before like anybody else, which is pretty cool. <laughs> got to see that. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so, it was amazing. So, I mean, how did, how did they how did they reach out? How did they recognize your talent? Was it just they like, just were doing a search? Did you find a way to like provide them some of your portfolio? Um, honestly, all the only thing that I was doing for that to happen was I was just posting on Instagram and and tagging star wars and just putting my art out there and they found me yeah like luckily um just very lucky I, I got an email once just saying hey my name is this I, I i work with um the walt disney company whatever in london we're doing a thing with star wars would you are you interested in this blah 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 
<laughs> we so. like no at first no. I, I really was because actually in the in the initial email the it said like six inch black series blah, blah, blah. um and they accidentally put five inch black series and i was like is this real they didn't even get the thing right <laughs> but um no it's just it's just a typo and, and it turned out to be real it turned out to be real so yeah. Just, I guess the, the biggest lesson learned is keep putting yourself out there and make, make sure that you are very available for somebody like them to reach you. Just keep putting yourself out there. Wow. Keep, keep posting. Keep going, guys, because one day you too could say this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, we know you collect a, you collect a little Star Wars. Oh yeah. Do you Definitely. have do you have any particular favorite brands that you stick with? Um, I know you mentioned also with, with uh, franchises. I know you mentioned before you're doing Power Rangers and DC. Um, so my, right now, my, what do you say is filling your shelves? It's weird. I the more, and I'm sure this is the same with every collector. But the more I collect things, the more I, I become interested in quality over quantity. Maybe, and mm -hmm. I don't want to say in anything that. Like, that is not quality. You know, I, I, f I mm -hmm. find myself going after figures that are a little bit more expensive and getting less of them. Um, <clears> so uh, I typically will try to, I, I, I love going for like the figure arts and the Mafex and the, a lot of the 70 to hundred dollar range oh, figures okay. in the 12 scale. Um, and mostly because as far as my favorite characters, I've pretty much got at least one good figure of that character so now i just want to i want to get the best figure i can in that character like superman for instance is my favorite character ever and so i'm always just i want to get the best superman possible and depending on which version i'm looking for but i'm always just looking for the best so um okay. yeah just i guess that the mezcos and the the mafex and the, the figure arts or whatever whatever's like the best of that specific character i'm looking for well, and, and that's a big thing. We've been talking about just the evolution of our own collections. Like I used to be the guy who would be, didn't matter what it was. It was a has, if it was a Marvel legend, I bought the wave and I bought the wave. And then eventually, eventually though, I come to the point where I'm like, why am I buying this? If I'm not liking so much of it. And right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I don't so much get the wave anymore. I'm just like, I just want this one and I'll pass on the rest. I don't really get the FOMO. Like I, like I, I probably, I did, I d definitely did, but it's easy for me to pass on things now. I just, I know what I want okay. and stick with that. And for the last question, uh, do you ever buy just a photograph? I pretty much only buy just a photograph now. Well, okay. The reason okay. I asked you buying just a photograph, like a website that I just discovered in the last year, the most dangerous damn site I found is 5k oh, no. toys. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. because they sometimes just have some unusual stuff like non-franchise yeah. stuff non and that's third party I mean. stuff hmm? sometimes yes. right their yeah. third part of the independence like even like the non-franchise things um like i didn't buy this one but like they got that they got this dinosaur that looks like a, a tyrannosaurus rex that looks oh like yeah a detective. Oh, exactly what you're talking about like, yeah I, he's cool no attachment to it but would you like would you buy something like that because i could probably do some funky stuff with that thing <laughs> actually it's weird. I I gear the things I buy around the things I want to photograph. And then I, I gear the things I want to photograph around things that I like, but also things that I know other people like. So I'm I'm constantly trying to make my YouTube channel or whatever pages grow as much as possible. And if I want that to happen, I have to appeal to like a very wide audience because the toy community is only what a couple. Well, there's only what, 10,000 10, of us in the whole that know about toy photography i don't know i may be bigger but like if i want to appeal to like the the moms and the pops and the people who have never heard of toy photography before i've got to use a character that they're going to recognize in order for them to still connect with it so i pretty much will only go for like characters i love but characters i know that other people can connect with like superman or if i go for star wars like i, I love going for the mandalorian and grogu because they've become so recognizable and even you know your mom's sister loves Grogu. Everybody does. And so, like, I kind of gear my collecting habits a little bit differently. She actually now. did. It's interesting. Okay. That's a great she loves Grogu, right? 
Who doesn't? <laughs> uh, we have a question here from Team Man Nine Seventy Eight. Looking at the photo, how much time did uh did it take you to create this uh -huh. uh, Star Wars picture? This this photo right here. This this is actually it's weird. This photo is probably like six, five or six years old, and it, it's still my favorite photo I've ever done. I've, I've really. And it, it's I don't think it's the best photo, but it's still my favorite. This is like a huge. This photo, I don't know what it is. Like, I ever since I did this, I've kind of geared my whole like Sir Dork branding around this character. Like, I've got this app okay. with him on oh, it. Question before, perfect. <laughs> it's because I, I took this is the first time I took a photo and I looked at it and I said, Wow, that's like really good. I, that's really <laughs> cool. I, I like that. Like, I, I, I might be kind of good at this. <laughs> and um, ever since cool. then, th sorry, the what? It's a, that's just an awesome feeling. It's like, fuck, I, I did right. this. Yeah, that's the that was the first time I did that, and I was like, "That's I did that. That's really cool." And so I kind of, I don't know. Ever since that one photo, I kind of like stepped on the gas, and like I got extra inspired, and um, so like that's like one of my favorites. And this one didn't take me too long, honestly. I just was like, I went out to the. I was living in an apartment complex. There was a puddle because it rained recently. And I stuck the figures in there and I was like, let me try to get water and fire at the same time. And I took it and then did a little, I combined two photos that were, one was mostly water. One was mostly the fireworks in Photoshop. And that was also a milestone because that was the first time I did that. Huh. Um, and then there we go. It's phenomenal. It's... <laughs> Thank so, you. I guess just not to, be, not to be reiterate, but we just got this from, so would you say that this is your favorite Star Wars photo then? I think it's it's probably my favorite photo I've ever done. Even oh. though like I've done a whole lot of photos that are probably better in my eyes than this one since then, but um I, I feel like I owe something to this photo. Like that's awesome. I, this is like a huge well, milestone it, picture. Like when I was pulling these photos for this, um I'll be honest, these two right here are my two of favorite that you have done. Like between the oh, cool. with that matrix and, and that. I said it was looking at like the entire page on search from Google. I'm like, that's cool. Like, ah, th these are the two. So yeah. <laughs> thank you. I, I like that. And that th this, this Superman one is um, the, one of the reasons why I like it is because it's, it's so simple. There's barely anything to it. I just like stuck my hand in there and I picked up some dirt. Like there was nothing else. There's barely any editing done to it besides mm -hmm. removing his stand. And it's just like all you need sometimes is just your your hand and some dirt and you can make a cool picture. Yeah. And again, this is one of many Superman photos that we've we've gone through. I mean, the one with the baseball was really fantastic as well. Oh, thanks. Um, the other one you recently did where he was uh blowing water on oh, the yeah. plants. Another recent one. I mean, that's just just that creative aspect of Thank it. I you. never thought about doing it. Or uh, or the Twizzlers, the licorice that you did to, to do a disembodied uh, action figure. That's one Just, of my favorites. I, I'm, I'm proud of the Twizzler one. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad you think they're cool. So, I mean, you, you kind of touched on a little bit of this, but we really wanted to focus on, like, you create all this stuff, but, like, it's tools and techniques. And sometimes, like you said, it's just practice and getting out there. But um, yeah, what's, what's, your, what's your kit that you normally go – out on a on a shoot with um well it i it is often very different but most of the time i'm i i use a sony camera it's a sony alpha 3 which is like probably the most basic if anyone if you think of a sony camera like that's the like the sony camera it's very um common very common sony it's kind of like the My canon rebel series the sony alpha it's like the uh um and I, I don't. I use the Rebel. <laughs> nice, yeah, which is great. And the reason why they're so common is because they're great and mm -hmm. uh, they're accessible. Sony's a little bit more pricey, but um, Canon's great. And the reason I use Sony is not because I think it's better. It's just kind of what I ended up using. You know, I still I still mess with my Canon every every once in a while. Um, but the tripod I use is very basic. It's a it's a Joby brand tripod which is just like one of those bendy ones mm -hmm. uh, okay. and it's one that I, I like to get nice and close to the ground and I can angle it you know it's and, and if anyone's 
actually interested in any of the stuff I do use uh, like on my website on sirdork.com, I have a Amazon page that has everything that I use mm-hmm. on it. Um, just in case. Um, but then natural versus studio. Um, I'm, I've always been more, uh, comfortable with doing things outside just because I started that way because when I started, I didn't have anything really, uh, because I just started, but mm-hmm. luckily there's a lot of good free stuff outside, like the sun, free lighting, dirt, free, I don't know, dioramas, sticks can make free diorama. You know, it's just all this stuff is free. And so that's how I learned. And I just, I was just doing a lot of things outside. So it took me a little bit to get used to doing things inside because I needed to provide everything like <clears throat> the lighting and uh, stuff like that. But um, there's, I don't think there's one that's better than others. I'll just go back and forth depending on my idea that I have and if it works better inside um, or outside. So then speaking of an idea then, so then what makes a Sir Dork photo, would you say? A Sir Dork Actually, you know what? That's... For a very long time, I thought I, I like, cause I guess for a while I thought a Sir Dork photo or one of my photos was like action effects, debris. And I just like, I thought that I had to do that every time. Cause I kind of was doing that all the time. And I felt pressured to always do that and not do anything else because mm-hmm. I thought nobody was going to like it because it was different. Um, and then eventually I've, I, just by doing it and becoming comfortable with myself or whatever. Um, I kind of just, when I think of an idea, I want to make sure that like, I, I, I want to execute that idea no matter what it is. Um, so I guess uh, I'm sure there's some type of uh, MO that my photos have, but to me, a Sirdark photo is just something that I, I take and that I think is cool. That's, that's okay. what all it needs to be. So. Yeah, just... Right. <clears throat> Whatever's the coolest, whatever looks cool in the end. <laughs> so with working with some of your some of the practical effects and stuff, is there a time or a story you can say about a shoot that uh, <clears throat> might have ended up with a, a melted figure or a damaged figure or a damaged... Uh, he has a bag of explosives go off on him last week. I did have a very damaged bag, yes. but um, I have damaged figures before. Um, never anything too bad. Not as often as you would think, because I do get that question often, but not as often as you would think, but I'm also a little bit less, um, what's the word less. I don't, I, I don't hold the figures as preciously to keeping them pristine. Yeah. As, as, so, yeah like I buy it because I want to use it. There are some figures I'll get sad if I, if I destroy it or something, but I've only really completely destroyed figures maybe once or twice um okay. but there was one time i wanted a photo so badly that i grabbed a figure i was okay with destroying and i pretty much just melted the crap out of it because um i wanted the photo to look this way so i was like you know what this is a worthless first order stormtrooper these things are like two bucks on amazon nobody cares about these i'll burn them and yes uh, mariano are you sid from toy story <laughs> I actually get that quite often, and uh, I'll be like, yes, yes. Red Dragon wants to know, do you plan on doing any uh, anime photos, or right now do you think you've got your lane that you're staying in? Totally. Uh, never never against that. I guess I guess it depends if whatever idea pops in my head um, mm-hmm. calls so for an anime figure. DBZ figures. Yes, I've got a lot of DBZ figures, that's for sure. Definitely got a bunch. And I just saw the whole the first Yu Yu Hakusho um Yusuke Yurameshi figure that uh uh Tamashi revealed, the figure arts, and I'm ready to get every figure from that line. I absolutely love Yu Yu Hakusho, so I can't wait for that. Yu Yu I never got into Yu Yu Hakusho. I actually got into the uh, another anime the same guy made called Flame of Rekka. That was my thing. Oh, I've never I've never even heard of that. That one, yeah. if you ever want a fun one, it might be. I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> so. Cool. I think one of the reasons, like, I love Dragon Ball Z. Like, it's one of the things that probably has made, turned me into the person I am today because of how much, you know, I loved watching it. But one of the things that keeps me away from uh, shooting them so often is so much of the cool stuff they do in the show I can't do practically. I would have to do 
like, you know, I can't do a real Kamehameha blast with dirt or something, or I can't have a Super Saiyan aura. I would have to do that digitally, which is nothing wrong with that. But I think I just, I, I, I wouldn't want to have, I know, I just like, <clears throat> there's two, I, I, I can't do that practically, I guess. And I think that's one of the reasons why I stay away from it. And I, I, I don't want to do it. But at the same time, I could totally do it without it. So I don't know. My mind is just weird. Got one more hardware question here for you for oh. a good camera you recommend. I know you like the camera. The camera I always recommend is the Canon Rebel, either the T6 or the T7. It's like, it's one of the, I think probably the most affordable, like good DSLRs you could probably mm -hmm. get. Uh, and it's, it's a camera that you can learn with and get really good with. And, but also use for years and years and years and still create amazing stuff like you'll it's like it's the perfect camera to learn with and to just use for decades and continue to make good stuff it's like the perfect camera for that all right so going with that now you both use the DSLRs, and my wife lets me use her old canon 70d once in a while but i'm a little nervous Ooh. with that i take my photos with my cell phone nice which again camera camera technology has advanced so so much over the years yeah have you gone th i mean obviously you, i'm sure you've gone and used like cell phones and stuff but like do you approach that in a different manner than your usual setup with a with your dslr yeah well i mean i i um i started out using a phone for a long time and okay. i had to learn how to use a camera after i got my first one after my my wife bought me my first camera a long time ago um but using a phone is is fantastic and there's a lot of things that you can kind of do with a phone that you sometimes can't even do with with a Get, camera it's so much more physically flexible right it's so it's so much first of all you've got it in your pocket at all times and so you can you can always do anything anytime with it which is always a huge advantage and you can get some angles that you can't really get unless you dig a hole and stick your camera exactly. in it to, you know um but I will say, um, it, I think it would be in any photographer's best interest who's looking to continuously grow and get better and better to eventually save up and, and get something like a DSLR. Even if it's kind of a pain at first to mm -hmm. get the hang of, because it really is a, a is. pain at first. But <laughs> you will find that you are a whole lot less limited with <clears throat> the DSLR. You can... A phone, you can do a lot of amazing things with it, but you'll always be a little bit limited uh, just with control and um, just being able to do anything with it. Uh, you, you'll, you'll always be a little bit limited. But but then at the same time, if you're good with your camera, you're going to with just your phone. You never you don't have to make that jump. You could keep doing what you're doing and create amazing stuff. And I'm, I'm sure the next camera phone model that comes out who knows it could be better than any dslr because it just keeps getting better and better you know so again it's with practice but also as you as you show with your with your art that you do some post editing some things to help enhance what you already have done or you know do things like you said with the superman picture you remove the stand um right. so i mean are you strict you're strictly lightroom and photoshop at this point right or is there other uh, applications you've used in the past i i'm a big fan of photoshop the the, the full thing it's a little pricey but um, mm -hmm. i do everything in, in photoshop and um it's it really is an amazing tool i i wouldn't be able to do half of the things that i i would like to do without without photoshop i i always keep in mind the editing process while i'm shooting because it's such a big part of creating in my opinion creating the best thing that i can create um so i'm always like okay if i shoot like this i can just hold the lighting here with this hand and then do another one with this hand and then i can just bring them together in photoshop so then i don't need two lights i only need one i can just go or something like that and it's um yeah photoshop is awesome oh and before we go to the last question i forgot to add that you know, through your through your work and your creativity, you also have been able to share like some products as as well. I mean, Loom, Loom Cube is a big part of your setup, right? I mean, how did how yeah. did you get the chance to get into that partnership? 
Um, well, uh, Loom Cube has kind of, I don't think they, you know, Loom Cube is a company that, um, you know, they, they make a bunch of great photography, LED uh, lighting stuff. And so they've kind of stumbled themselves into like the toy photography base, which I don't think they ever thought they would, but they, they are. <laughs> and um, one time, because every so often they'll do like these contests, if you hashtag their lit by loom hashtag, they'll run like a contest and they'll pick your photo. And then, and so one time one of my photos won their contest and I said, Hey, if you ever need a guy, to do photos, you know, just trying to pitch myself back then. Um, they said, yeah, sure. Fill out the affiliate uh, thing and apply right now. And I'm like, okay. And I got accepted. And so if anyone's ever interested in things like that, most companies have an affiliate program that you can just apply for or just sign up for and get right away. Okay. So um, that's great. Um, yeah. It's, so, it's, um, it's, and, it's great. And you've been using their products for, for how long? I mean, is it from the start um, or as you've, advance your your skill sets only specific, well for i guess for loom cube um not from the start but um one time i just kind of like saw like an ad for them and i was like this is really cool and then like my mom bought me one for like christmas or something and um then ever since then i was like this is so cool i love using this and then that's when i kind of got caught on and they found my stuff and then it's okay. been like a great a great partnership <clears throat> awesome oh well, we have another question from the chat <clears throat> uh, Mario wants to know, can you explain a, a DSLR camera? Well, um, I'm not a huge, I mean, I'm not a huge camera expert as far as terminology either, um, okay. to be completely honest. But as far as like a full, I guess, full framed camera where you can switch out your lenses and adjust your settings, there's two mm -hmm. main categories. There's like a DSLR and there's a mirrorless and mm -hmm. they're both essentially the same exact thing. One of them is lighter than the other. Mirrorless is lighter than the other. So that's, and then, so there's DSLR and mirrorless. But DSLR just tends to be a little bit chunkier. And then okay. uh, a mirrorless uh, doesn't always operate as well under low light as a DSLR. Right. Because it's got more mirrors in it, I guess. Okay. Um, I'm sure there's a, better photographer out there that could give you a better explanation than that. But as far as I have learned, they're basically the same thing. But basically when we say DSLR, I think we're just talking about a full digital, digital stuff. Yeah, like a full digital camera where you can switch the lens, adjust your settings and all that kind of stuff. Like a okay. full camera. And we have one more real quick here. Uh, Red oh. Dragon wants to know, have you built any model kits? Not a lot of Gunpla gunpla model kits if um i'm assuming that's what you're referring to because your picture um i have done one before i'm not a huge gundam fan but i have done a few other bondi model kits like the star wars one like i've done the the stormtrooper because those are great because you can put them together but then take them apart and paint them and customize them a little bit better so mm -hmm. i've done a few of those some some pokemon ones too for sure i'm a big pokemon fan but mm -hmm. um no not a lot of gunpla so hopefully that doesn't disappoint you too much. Ah, it's all good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I was going to go back one, Dave. I'm sorry. You mind going no back? Problem. So <clears throat> one of the things we were talking about, obviously, before the show was within the toy photography community, there are those that find it more of a challenge to strictly do everything practically and not do a lot of a lot or any post editing. Um, and then, you know, there's there's other ones that, you know, find a way to enhance the art form and their right. and their photography. Do you see the I guess the 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 phrasing that we have here is Photoshop tool versus versus a crutch? I, I totally obviously I see is that you see it as a tool in your arsenal, so to speak, to create right. amazing art. But yeah, I, how, I, have you been criticized for using that? I guess sometimes. Sometimes, for sure. And usually, if I have been criticized, it's just from somebody that, uh, in, in the nicest way possible, just isn't necessarily too familiar with photography as a whole. Like, uh, like if you, and, and that's, I mean that in the most um, gentle way possible. Like, for instance, like, my dad, like, I was doing, because my dad's an artist, 
amazing artist and i was doing some of the photos of his uh artwork one time and i was like okay cool we got the photos let me just put them in photoshop and we can edit them and he's like he's like edit them what do you i'm not what are you what are you talking about we, we got the pictures we don't need to edit them mm -hmm. i was like dad every picture is edited it's like dad if you look at any picture that you see anywhere in any advertisement in any magazine anything it's gonna have a not even even if it's a little bit everything's edited and there's nothing wrong with that doesn't mean i'm gonna go and turn put a flying saucer in photoshop over your thing <laughs> no, i'm just gonna edit it a little bit and i think sometimes there's a just a, little a, cropping, a little bit of like, a little cropping a little bit of just make the colors look a little bit more realistic as opposed to the way they look in real life as opposed to how they show up in the camera you know it's just a little bit of and um yeah and i also do get like if there's like um like the specifically there's the, the toy photography like group called the articulated comic book art the acba mm -hmm. guys and they are yeah and they they um and there's probably somebody that can explain this better than me but their biggest uh challenge is to create everything without any editing and, and i think that's handle. really cool yeah it's like there's that's their goal their goal is to uh to create and accomplish a really great photo like a comic book articulated comic book art without <clears> editing just in in that means they have they, everything that's done has to be done you know with your hands with the figures and the diorama and then that's the art and then the picture is just a picture of that and I'm sure, like I said, there's probably a better way of explaining it. And that's a really cool challenge and goal that they have. And that's just, mm -hmm. you know, that's just, it's just like, you know, if you watch a movie, some people say, I love practical effects. Some people say, oh, I love CGI. And mm -hmm. to me, it's just like, I'm just into whatever looks the coolest. There you go. And whatever I know how to do, whatever looks the coolest. But the only oh, thing I that I have where I kind of draw the line is I'll try to stay away from Photoshopping too much of that's not done in camera because i still want my photos to feel tangible and that's okay that i don't know if that's the right word but i want that's perfect I want, that's perfect i want i want somebody to look at my photo and still say oh cool this is a photo of a toy that somebody did because mm -hmm. if, if i'm even if i there's some people that make toy photography so incredibly beautiful to the point where it doesn't even look like a toy anymore because it's just so this incredibly brilliant skillful piece of piece of art that's you know that's just like amazing um and i still want people to say oh cool that's a toy doing that like yeah. i still i still want <clears throat> that novelty of, of a photo the best compliment i ever got from one of the guys in the react in our figure action group is i took a photo of, of, a, of a figure and someone said god damn it now i need to own it yeah, nice. Yeah. That's Absolutely. a great compliment. Yeah. That's really cool. <clears throat> so with some of the tools, some of the tools that we've been seeing now, there's a lot more AI aspects. And I'm sure maybe you've heard of Dave talked about it last week a little bit, but like the Fresh Monkey Fiction kind of yes. drama. I have one I of their one, one of their uh, figures. But, um, but um, yeah, a lot of their stuff was they, they found out a lot of the photography that was used was uh, AI generated completely. Really? Um, yeah and, so their box they're doing it for their box art right okay so that's the same brand that makes the santa claus figures right yes they do the santa claus figures they're doing these whole like oh i didn't know that Joe slash horror ones but uh well that's so what that's more what for their box art it's not their toy photography it's their box art okay i don't quite i don't think i'm going to be seeing ai being done for production photos i hope gotcha. to god i'm not going to see ai being used for production for actual products. right especially if you're trying to if you're trying to sell a physical product and you're exactly. and you're using things that's are yeah i get it yeah mm -hmm. didn't know that that's interesting Sorry, so continue. just kind of moving on now so for you do some amazing tutorials on your site like i said i was saying earlier i was just actually re-watching your video on lighting you had this great picture of like a stormtrooper one you're like i was looking at this I'm like why do i like this so much and it's because i realized i got that lighting just oh right. cool yeah i know what you're talking about that's great I, i'm, I'm glad to hear that so uh so uh, if someone wanted to be like okay dude i love what you do i want to get on this you know obviously hit, look up sir, sir dork on youtube give it a like follow yes. 
follow, subscribe, Thank and you. hit that notification bell. And then, then we immediately go to two star screen and hit like, you know, I digress. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, do that too. What vid which videos would you say, check out this one, this one, and this one? Just We'll go with the, t the, th the three would you see would be a good foundation to go oh, with. Um, I've, I've, I've made so many to the point where I don't even remember them all anymore. But um, I what I try to do is I try to keep them very organized. If you go to my channel, I have them separated into playlists. So there's a toy photography basics playlist. So that's all videos for if you're just getting started. And there's one that's just tutorials. Um, and there's a video, and, and this has my, been my goal, and I hope that this is the case, but there should be a video on my channel for whatever stage you're on in your journey, whether you're trying to figure out what types of figures or when to shoot, or if I should do indoor or outdoor, or if I use a phone or how about camera settings. So what I would do, if especially if you're just getting started, go to the Toy Photography Basics playlist. It's all right there on the on the channel and you'll have like everything you need to know, just like how to get started, some gear, things you need and um, just kind of you know whatever questions you might have. There should be a video for that. And if you can't find it, send me a DM and I'll, I'll send you a I'll send you put you in the right direction. Oh, cool. Great. <laughs> That's it. Subscribed. Um... Yes. So right here we got our, we do have our toy photography tutorials, and then we have our basics, and then of course shooting yes. and reviewing. Yeah, the shooting and reviewing we section is fandom, so we're getting a lot of. Yes. Yes. Sorry. No, go ahead, go, go, please. <laughs> I'm just saying we're, we're getting a lot of questions from the audience about have you shot this <clears throat> favorite thing? I know Mariano mentioned that he likes your your Pokemon stuff. I don't think we're, but we're, this is just a great, we have a great breakdown here for all this stuff. Um, the pre edited one, by the way, I can point, I can say I did used to use GIMP for a while, so I do recommend that as well. GIMP is great. So great. there's a lot of ways of getting, in, of shooting stuff without having to uh, break your bank. So keep that in mind. Guys. Yes. Yes. Cool. <clears throat> yeah. Thanks so, for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. We have. <clears throat> Gashes. Oh, Gashes. Hey, man. That's so. awesome. Thank you so much, dude. <laughs> All so. right. All right. So <clears throat> now here's the, let's hit, let's get some fun. We've already talked the meat and potatoes. Let's talk about the side. <laughs> uh, the Galactic Valor is a Kickstarter that is currently going on right now. Yes, it is. Another, another great uh, entry into the science fiction figure room and we, of course we've got cosmic legions as regulars of the channels know we had the legendary and this is just another just more space opera which is this is a great time for sci-fi it's like two years ago mythic legions came in and then savage crucible and all that stuff's come through with the sword and sorcery it's like sci-fi is back baby yeah yeah and these are really cool figures these are really cool <laughs> Obviously, yeah. you got to handle some of these guys. Yes, I had I had nothing to do with the inception or really anything to do with these figures, except for I took some pictures of them, um, which was a really great opportunity. So the guy who is the creator, his name's James. Um, he also had a successful um, Kickstarter with the Stardusk figures, which are kind of like G.I. Joe's in space, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, but in very much that classic um not so much like the classic older gi joes not so much like the newer ones but like 3.75 o-ring yeah style. like that kind of feel like that kind of feel um and yeah. so these are more of like a step up towards of a serious type of sci-fi um with um more of a like high-end action figure kind of feel um and they're really cool there's some soft goods on them they're really great. And so the, the way I got involved is um, I saw him at Legion's Con. And I saw the figures and I was like, these are really cool. Congrats <laughs> on creating this. Like you actually are, are making a toy line, you know. And I thought that, you know, it's just that's so cool to see somebody like actually doing that. Um, and then I also was just like I always do. It's like, hey, if you ever need any, you know, really cool looking photos, let me know. I'd love to. We can. I'd love to work together. And then mm -hmm. he said, okay. And then he did. He just, she reached <clears throat> out. And then we, we, 
you know, he told me what he, what he wanted and what his goals were. And I was like, I'll just do my best to make these look super cool, as cool as possible. <clears throat> and um, so, yeah, I, I got to take some, some photos of them, of, of the prototypes. Mm -hmm. And hopefully and they, I, they, sorry, go ahead. No, no. I was going to say you also did the campaign video, correct? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we, we worked out like a thing to um, um, take some photos and yeah. And if you go to the campaign, the, the Kickstarter, the video on the top, I put that uh, together too, <clears throat> okay. which is really cool. So I just, I just hope that the pictures are cool enough to the point where people mm -hmm. say, wow, these are awesome. I want to, back this project and i want to 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 get them so um oh well, we could definitely, definitely say um currently right now at least you got 188 people who are into it wow that's that's really cool 100 i mean i, I was checking the numbers earlier today and i was like all right we're at 33 a little almost 34 but yeah i didn't say 188 that's a lot yeah awesome so, yeah go go and take a look at these and get these figures they're really cool there's tons yeah, of mean, cool add-ons and stuff yeah really cool. box art looks really good um i love the they're doing the right thing with the size comparison chart like these will go great with your star wars figures yeah uh, this is and this is a great variety of to show the scale as well picture there um, yeah, and those and those the those product photos like the one like right here that is done by trevor um one six shooter oh really um, yeah so he he did like the main like this is the product like this is what you're getting and then i just did like the fun the fun pictures to like for that tangibility i guess is that cape okay. I, I have to ask since you got your hands on it is that cape wired yes it is that the capes uh the cape on him is done by c uh cj ism oh okay. or c yeah and so yeah if, if you're if you're familiar with him then you know you're getting Really that good. guy makes the really best good. damn cape for, from any company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's he does really great work. Yeah, if you handled any sort of mythic or cosmic figure with soft goods, I mean, his work is phenomenal. It's really yeah, it's kind of cool. Like this, this project is kind of like a really cool melting pot of a lot of insanely talented people. Like mm -hmm. uh, some of the the sculptor, mm -hmm. uh, there's the painting and sculpting are done by like these super. Uh, talented people with great credentials i think the sculptor has done um, a bunch of stuff for mcfarlane oh. so yeah it's really cool and yeah at the very yeah. least just go and read up on, on some of the info on the kickstarter there's a lot of cool stuff in there yeah i think nikki nicole customs did the paint masters for the prototypes yes um, then they're just, uh, remember that name folks could be something else in the future we're trying we're trying yeah. so me so 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 you're how long how many days did it take you to do the the, the entire line for this photo shoot or was it just one of those you got you um, just got into it and it was like it was about um probably about two weeks um for me to to do everything um and like he he had a pretty strict like well here I'll, I'll send you the figures i need them back before this time because i also need things done for the launch for the kickstarter this and that so um okay. i was like i'll i'll you know i'm pretty i'm pretty quick with 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 stuff so um i guess yeah i guess like two weeks or so to to put everything okay. together <clears throat> now the, the desert one here on the far right where where did you take i mean where was that like around your neighborhood again or did you build that up or I took a, a flight to to Arizona, and no, I, there's a. Uh, I wish, man, I would love to do that. But no, there's there's this um, uh, nature preserve near me that's got this big hill that uh, it looks like sand, but it's actually just like really fine dirt. And I go there all the time uh, for desert looking photos, and it looks like the desert, which is really cool. But it's it's just good old upstate New York pine bush preserve. <laughs> that's that's cool <clears throat> thanks yeah i love i love that that spot so then do we know i mean i have to ask has anyone else been reaching out to you will we be seeing your stuff in any other in for any other kickstarters or um, projects big projects what what is next for you sir aside from more off content <laughs> well i'm always i'm always trying to 
uh, keep myself open. But um, I guess I know you, you you had the legendary guys on. Um, mm -hmm. I have done a little bit of stuff with them. So I guess once those figures are actually ready to hold in hand, you'll see some some photos and stuff um, of mine from them. Awesome. Yeah. We were. We, yeah. Which I can't we wait. Both back that we both back legendary. So we're, we're very excited <clears throat> awesome. About this. Cool. Uh, but other than that, I don't have any specific types of uh, projects like that. My biggest focus that I'm putting all of my work into is is YouTube right now. I'm just trying to put out um, as much as I, I possibly can. Just uh, if if you're not if you're trying to put your stuff out there, whatever it may be, toys, uh, action figures, I don't know, any type of art, YouTube's a big place, and there's a lot of opportunities on YouTube. It's a lot of work as you guys i'm sure know <laughs> but uh it's it can be very rewarding uh after a while it's it's very it's a big big landscape of a lot of people on youtube and speaking of rewarding please reward us with a like a comment a subscribe. yes <laughs> if, you, yeah. here. Now, if you're watching this you haven't liked it yet you come on like it just just like it now it one of the things that i looked in at going through some of your your videos and such there were t there were conventions or was it a toy photography convention you were helping kind of build up. Um, is that still right? Something that's actively going? Is it ex is it you know, growing as well? Unfortunately, no, it's not. Uh -huh. But well, back in twenty twenty one, my wife and I we put together what we were calling you know the first toy photography convention ever, and we pretty much spent the whole year. Uh, putting it together and um, trying to make it super awesome. And it, it really was, I think, really awesome. It was a great day. And, it, and unfortunately, it just wasn't um, something that could be financially sustainable yeah. <laughs> to do every year. Um, so uh, we, at this time, don't really have any future plans to do it again. Plus, I also learned a lot about myself during that time learning that like man planning big events is hard <laughs> it's hard <laughs> and it's a it's a lot of it's just yeah it's tough that i missed um, that 2021 yeah it was in saratoga new york so it was ah. a little bit more north than a lot of the um you know like new jersey toy con and there's a lot of stuff mm -hmm. and you know we we've learned that maybe if we did a little bit more down south it would have been a little bit better but um okay. yeah it was, it was really cool but <laughs> as of right now we don't have any plans to do it again but who knows? Well, that's kind of my, my next question is, um, you know, I was fortunate enough to geek out in front of you last year at Legion's Con when I saw you walking yeah, by and got a picture, and I, I treasure that one. Have the, have you gone to any toy conventions this year, or are there specific ones that you're definitely planning on, on going to? That Well, I'll definitely be at uh, Legion's Con, for sure. Did you get your, you got um, your tickets already? No, I oh. don't. That's not going to sell out, right? You know what? I don't think. The one but... thing, I love Legion's Con, but the, the one thing I did not like was, I think, like, on their website, they um, they really kept talking about, like, it's going to sell out, it's going to sell out, it's going to sell out, make sure you get it. And then, but the only option to buy it online was, like, the big, like, two-day two ticket. Two day. And I was like, <clears throat> so, so I, and, and I didn't, they're pressuring me to get the bigger ticket, even though I, I only needed to go for one day. And I got right. there, and there's plenty of tickets available. You know, I didn't and need to spend the it's extra. It's the same right now. It's it's still forty bucks for both days. So. Yeah, and my wife and I, I spent like a hundred bucks for us to go, even though it's a great show. But I'm sure you'll probably be okay if you just go the day of and buy a ticket. Mm -hmm. But um, I it's it's probably one of my favorite conventions ever. Um, yeah. It's really great. Uh, I do have one in June coming up that I have a booth at. It's called the Toying Around Block Party. Uh, it's okay. in Johnstown. Or, is it Johnstown? Yeah, it's in Johnstown, New York, which is might be a little bit of a hike for some people. Mm -hmm. But it's cool. It's one of the most unique, I think, um, types of conventions because it's outside. It's uh, it's really cool. It's outdoors. It's like a ton of fun stuff happening all the time. There's tons of toys. Uh, it's run by a big toy store, there, so there's plenty of toys there. Um, there's food trucks and just like cool stuff everywhere. It's so much fun. So okay. I would definitely recommend that. <clears throat> now, say someone in the chat or you know co-hosting a show would like to take 
and take some of your photography, get some of your photos to hang up on their wall. Is there, do you, do you sell some of your, uh, some, some of your photography yes. online? I do. Okay. Yeah. And thank you so much for asking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I do, I do sell like, uh, big posters of, of okay. just about anything, uh, that I do. And if you just go to my website, which is sirdork.com, you can find that along with, um, just about everything else I do. And it's pretty easy to find once you go to sirdork.com. All right. And then, and going along with that, have you ever had someone approach you or email you asking for a specific commission? Say they want to, they want a particular figure yes. and have an idea. Do you, have you worked with people like that in the past and yeah. how, what's your experience on that? Yeah, definitely. Um, you sh uh, yeah. So yeah, if anyone is ever interested, yes, I, I absolutely do that. And um, just an email away really. But uh, a lot of the times where i'll be at different toy conventions like i i have um i'll set up my own booth like a sort of booth at a lot of local conventions and mm -hmm. sell um photos and posters and stuff and usually commissions come there from people that are not super familiar with toy photography they're like wow this is cool like could you do like at the most recent one I got, someone said, could you do like Deadpool cracking an egg? Because my husband works with eggs and he loves Deadpool. <laughs> he would love that. And I was like, are you kidding me? Yeah, that sounds Deadpool. great. And so, and yeah, I did you know, Deadpool cracking an egg. And that was a ton of fun. Um, and they paid me for it, which is cool. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy to be able to get paid to do things you love, you know. Wow. <clears throat> Well, that's real good. Very cool. Good news to have uh, in here for myself <laughs> later on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're in that 10 o'clock spot. So okay. um, and I know you're a family man, but we definitely want to say thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you. This has been very educational. As you can guys see here, I've got sirdork.com awesome. up here. They got all kinds of cool stuff here. If you want to see what this man shoots, you know, from... I know Mariano, you like the Pokemon. We got the Pokemon. Nice. Star Wars, Batman. This is a, a gorgeous, <clears throat> gorgeous showcase. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> you really can't go wrong. And he's Dave, got a would shop you up there. Because there's Just one picture you, that was really. By the good. way, I'm in no shortage of time, by the way. So don't yeah. feel like you need to rush for anything for me. My yeah. wife's asleep right now. So can you can you talk about David? Do you mind expanding the Batman? photo and, and this will be very brief but just w the concept that you had there now the this is basically like i said this is kind of like the same shoot area that you were doing the spider-man photo at correct yeah so but you had uh, in your in your behind the scenes you had those little tiny leds is that the same system that you used behind batman here actually the, the batman photo is is 10 times more simple than the spider-man um, I pretty much, I, I, Batman is up on like a f action figure stand. So he, he's kind of floating like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just got the right angle and the background is just the, the city behind me. And you're not allowed you look to make the, McFarlane figure look that good. It's just, it's oh, not, that's not right. I, I mean, McFarlane's great. And, and <clears throat> I mean, especially that figure, um, but the, if you look at the top top right corner and the top left corner, there's like mm -hmm. two you know light sources coming from there. Those are from me. Like I put um, one of my loom cubes on each side, and then I held one up on the left hand side to get that lighting on not only from the sides but above. So then mm -hmm. that gives like in that nice little rim lighting above the the uh, cape and stuff. Okay. Uh, this is a Twizzler yeah. shot that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks. That's one of my favorites. Uh, it's <clears throat> wild idea I had in my head. I, and I love it to shoot out. NECA figures. Yeah. Same. Yeah. And that, that was not easy to pop that in half. I had to actually break the figure, which was unfortunate. But was, uh, I, I had recently gotten a newer Jason figure, so that one was already kind of messed up. Mm -hmm. I bought it used, and it was already kind of messed up, so it wasn't. <clears throat> uh, yeah, that was the older. That was that was like the older NECA plastic, anyway. Right. Yes. Yeah. Noticeably so, different quality. So, do you have any? Can you give any hints on what your next uh, photo set's going to be? I don't know. Um, 
not sure. Usually the photos that I'll, I'll, I'll do revolve around the YouTube videos I'll do. And the next video, I think I'm going to do, it might be a Mortal Kombat thing. It might be a Mortal Kombat okay. thing. Potentially. <clears throat> um, sometimes I'm very last minute. So sometimes I'm not, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Just take, go where go where the heart takes you, man. Go where that God dang it that look. That is so awesome. Dang. Thank you. I <laughs> appreciate me, that very much. I had and to again, stop on that one. And we put your link to your to the website here on the in the chat. Um tons cool. of eye candy. <laughs> King Shark. Dude. <laughs> so much good stuff, man. Thank you. Yeah, if, if anyone's interested, like uh, um, I also post these on on Instagram, and every every post with the photo has the behind the scenes as well. Like you'll see a video with behind the scenes, and then the next swipe has like all the camera settings and gear and all the information about it. Great. So, <clears throat> wow. This is it, guys. You you want that step by step? This is the man to follow. <laughs> Cool. So, Thank you. Fantastic Thank you. work. Absolutely <clears throat> fantastic. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank so. you. Well, I mean, this has been All a fantastic right, yeah. evening, right? Everyone in the chat, please support this man. Like I said, I know Mariana subscribed. <laughs> Check out the man's site. Um, Thank you. We appreciate, uh, Jared, we appreciate you joining us tonight. <clears throat> um, everybody who joined us, you reaching out. Take your action and take your reaction. If you love this kind of content, Mike, I know, is basically been our absolute phenomenal producer and fort and source for this for talents. Um, oh. So make sure hit his channel, our channels, hit those likes, subscribes, notification bells. We will stay on top. We will bring out a lot of cool new content mm -hmm. for the whole mm -hmm. variety of the fandom here, and that's. Again, that oh. is the purpose of React. Gash has just dropped a sub. Uh, awesome. Well, that depends. Are they so much. driving or do they just drop their dinner? <laughs> <laughs> they're eating a Subway sandwich and they're like, oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, Jared, just, you know, you, you, we've actually been nice to you. Okay. I've helped. Uh, I'm like, I tell the worst. The, the, the worst. If my, I don't know if my wife and daughter are still paying attention, they would vouch for that. I don't know. Those, you've been on fire. Those are there's been some good. I'm I am a, a appreciator of the same type of, of awful, amazing humor. So yeah. I, I'm right there with you. That was good. So, but I, I but, think the um, biggest takeaway I got from you was just if you have an idea, go with it. You have yes. a shot in your mind. Just go. I agree. Yeah. Don't don't let yourself say ah. I don't think I can pull that off. Just do it. If you um if you try it and it doesn't work out, try it again and you'll learn from it and then you'll get it. Yeah, just 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 do it. All right, then okay, then guys, everyone have a phenomenal <laughs> evening. We'll see the rest of you guys this Thursday for the new at nine PM Eastern time for figure action. And until next time, take care. Peace. Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. <laughs>